Welcome again to the group exhibit for Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at the Hanover Fair 2016. My name is Michael and I will be the moderator for this next discussion. Uh, I would like to invite anyone standing to please have a seat and join us. It should be a very enlightening dis uh, uh, talk. Um, there are complimentary beverages of course and table service so please have a seat and make yourself comfortable. Joining me today uh, are two gentlemen from Bos Bosol. Uh, the uh, sales director, Steph Wiesenbeek, and the head of advanced R&D, Dr. John Paul Janssens. If you could please join me in welcoming to them, uh, them to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. John Paul, hello. Turn this around. Oops. Ah, right. Just uh, uh. face the other way. <clears throat> okay, gentlemen, thanks again. Um, you know, welcome to the stage, and uh, I'd like you to take this opportunity, if you don't mind, to introduce our audience to uh, Bosal and uh, and your technologies. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bosal is best known as a, a tier one uh, automotive supplier for emission control systems. We make uh, basically uh, everything uh, between the the engine manifold and the and the tailpipe. Um, and uh, out of uh, this uh, knowledge of uh, stainless steel. Uh, welding, forming, uh, grew also uh, an activity of uh, energy uh, conversion. Um, nowadays uh, producing in uh, the Netherlands and doing uh, research in uh, Belgium, where also our headquarter is uh, situated. And uh, we, we work uh, a lot for uh, fuel cell uh, customers uh, at the moment. So we have uh, found a good spot here in this uh, fuel cell community uh, at the Hanover Messe. Yeah, very good. So as you mentioned, you are uh, primarily known as an automotive supplier. Um, I guess, uh, and the fuel cells is comparatively newer to your company, um, but I guess you probably have a lot to draw on in terms of volume of production and scale of your capabilities for high volume production for the growth of this industry. Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, we have um, uh, all over the world. We have about 30 uh, factories uh, working for different uh, automobile uh, customers. So we have got this uh, background. Uh, okay, before we start to make larger series of uh, uh, fuel cell reformers, preheaters, other hot, hot balance of plant components. It's still going to take uh, a few years, but we can draw, of course, uh, from this uh, uh, automotive engineering and production uh, background. Yeah. So, um, you know, here today we're talking about uh, about heat exchangers uh, and heat exchanger technology. I guess what specific knowledge or capabilities uh, would you say uh, can make uh, Bosal a leader in this market? Well. Uh Bosal, background of Bosal is exhaust systems, uh, stainless steel products, and uh, what we are making are in fact uh, stainless steel components for balance of plant, which function between ambient temperature and up to 1000 degrees C. And uh, in this way, it is uh, forming, cutting, welding, uh, putting components together and ensure that they work at high temperatures in thermal cycling. So you develop customized high-performance heat exchangers, is this, this is correct, yes? Um, I guess describe um, the development and validation cycle for a new design. Well, it starts with a customer. So you have a customer, you have customer needs, and based on those, you first uh, make a kind of uh, concept, uh, so sizing concept. You develop that in a virtual environment, and that virtual environment is similar to those that you use for automotive. So you have a complete virtual uh, testing as well. And uh, further on, if, if you have then the performance validated, you start with the endurance, and that you do with uh, 
test setups and also with uh, thermal cycling in uh, and the uh, virtual tools that we have. And it is in, in this area that we have a, a lot of knowledge also out of automotive. I guess there would be automotive test standards that you could follow, yes, is this correct? Yes, indeed. Um, what, um, so with your background in automotive, I guess my question would be, what are the unique design constraints that apply specifically for fuel cell applications for heat exchangers? Well, the, the uniqueness is, of course, that it has to function at high temperature, high effectiveness values, which means that you must ensure that all the heat transfer is done with very low temperature differences. And further on is also the quality and the endurance up to 80,000 hours a must in that environment. This is a bit different from automotive. In automotive, you have a lot of thermal cycling, in uh, fuel cell applications, you have a lot of hours that need to be accumulated. Yeah. So I guess, um, you know, related to testing, what are the, you know, what are the critical reliability risks or, or common failure modes that you would uh, expect in a heat exchanger for a fuel cell system? The main problem with this type of, of products is always the the plastic deformation that occurs during heat up and cool down and also that you have to make a structure with the necessary compliance so that it is uh, capable of reducing the, the local stresses and in this way perform according to the requirements of the customer. So fuel cells uh, the life of uh, uh, the the useful life of fuel cells, as they become uh, you know ready commercial systems and are for sale, are extending you know uh, quite long now. We see people quoting 70,000, 80,000 hours potentially for the life of a system. How does this compare against your experience with automotive in terms of the longevity of the heat exchanger? And is there anything uh, unique to the design of the, the heat exchanger that would enable you to meet or exceed this requirement? Well, there is, of course, uh, the material selection, and it is the, the way that uh, the, the cores, as you, for instance, see here. So you have cores that are based on modular designs, and that are then combined with manifolding in such a way that they can withstand the environment of the, the different temperature regions in the system. Okay. Okay. Um, what, um, what uh, you know, I guess, what drives innovation at Bosal? Well, innovation is driven by making your own product obsolete. So yeah. we make, uh, we, we search for solutions for the future uh, because, well, automotive and automotive exhaust systems is also something which is not going to grow anymore. Mm -hmm. So we look for other applications and we think that uh, such field like uh, fuel cells is one of those that will grow in the future. And uh, there we also have to mention that we, also, all, we are working on fuel cells since 2005, so that is already a long time. And it is by accumulating experience, hours, testing, field test, things like that, that you uh, are getting comfortable with the failure modes and uh, the new designs are, of course, always a step better than the previous ones. I think we told you the story about uh, the Sterling engine uh, 20 years ago when we were at, uh, at an American uh, customer yeah. was building a car with a Sterling engine and then we noticed yeah, that uh, this did not offer any, any business opportunities for us, no exhaust. Yeah. So, and then our, uh, our boss, uh, the founder of Bozal, he um, uh, put our R&D uh, department at work and asked them to uh, develop um, a Sterling preheater. So that was then the start for, uh, for a new business. Um, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. So maybe this question for you, Steph. I guess what, what message would you like to get out about about uh, you know about Bosel and your capabilities for everyone in our audience who is working on fuel cell technology. Well, I think the the very special capability uh, of Bosel is uh, 
that we would be really well placed to uh, to take your products from first prototypes up to small series up to uh, mass production uh, we've been uh, now for a number of years in uh, in these uh, field tests uh, the Calux uh, field test in Germany, uh, in a field uh, tests uh, all over Europe for multiple years. We are, uh, for most of our products, we are now coming into the, the third or fourth uh, generation. So our customers oblige us more or less every year to do an upgrade uh, of the products. And uh, we are now making smaller series, and I hope uh, within uh, within uh, two years' time. It depends uh, a little bit whether you are talking about uh, domestic soft sea applications or large soft sea applications. But within two years' time, we should be uh, capable to make uh, volume production of a uh, hot balance of plant components for uh, solid oxide fuel cells, also for molten carbonate fuel cells, for example. So there are certainly different scales of fuel cells, uh, you know, discussed. There are megawatt scale fuel cells. There's one uh, just over there. There are uh, el electrolysis systems. There are, uh, of course, with the Enfield program, there are residential system, micro combined heat and power systems. Um, uh, what, uh, you know, what are your what are your targeting? Are you targeting large systems or are you targeting distributed small systems? We we were we uh, work with a modular concept. So uh, we started to serve uh, the market of uh, of micro CHP uh, fuel cell uh, applications. Uh, but in the meantime, we developed also in larger uh, one megawatt and and larger uh, installations. But due to these different sizes of uh, of uh, plates uh, which we stack, which we laser weld. Uh, it's like uh, a Lego. We can increase and, and follow the customer into uh, the size and performance uh, just as the customer wants. That, that is one, of course, the size and the performance. Uh, additionally, we have further functionalities integrated. So we also code our heat exchangers. And in this way, you get... Uh, for instance, an uh, oxidative or reductive function. So the, the one is a kind of after treatment so that you condition the exhaust gases uh, or you uh, reduce the fuel internally in the, fuel, uh, in the heat exchanger and uh, you uh, feed the uh, endothermal reaction and so that you can have a very good uh, fuel conversion in the system itself. Are these coding technologies proprietary to Bolson? Yes, yes, and we already do a lot of, we have a lot of tests running, okay. and uh, we also develop, uh, well, let's say, IP around this, uh, to these topics, yes. So, I mean, all of the systems, all of your customers, I'm sure, put pricing pressure on, uh, pr you know, price and performance, you know, pressure on you to deliver products that exceed, meet or exceed requirements, but also uh, from a performance standpoint, but also from a cost standpoint, are there unique um, cost, uh, pricing pressure within the fuel cell industry that's different than automotive? The, our products um, yeah, are an important driver of the performance and probably also a driver of the cost. Uh, you may say that in a, in a small soft sea system, uh, the heat exchanger component accounts for more or less 10% of the cost. So, logically, there is, uh, is uh, some pressure uh, on the prices, yeah. But it is not as tough as in automotive. Yeah. If you know, uh, in the automotive world, uh, you are working with, let's say, commodities, and there the margins are pretty, pretty small, yes, and hard to reach. Sure. So. So when it comes to um, the difference between production for small scale, let's say like uh, meeting your deliverables for the Enfield program with your, with your customers there and getting up to large scale into automotive, I guess, how do you manage your products through that transition uh, from the low volume, from the prototyping scale up to, up to high, high volumes? Even though uh, we are only making small series uh, at the moment, we, we had to make sure that our manufacturing footprint 
uh, it's ready, uh, has been uh, agreed. We have to uh, take into account uh, the, the quality uh, procedures, which we also apply in automotive. Uh, we, we have to align with the certain uh, European and American uh, directives. So this is, these are stages that we have already prepared because uh, depending on, on, on what is going to happen in Germany, for example, with the maybe a subvention which is coming up, we will have to be able to ramp up quite fast uh, to have uh, more products uh, ready to go to market. Uh, John Paul, you mentioned a minute ago uh, talking about uh, the reliability testing of uh, heat exchangers and cycling. Um, I guess tell me about the testing that goes on to, to validate these samples. If you test only a few samples, obviously you won't have statistical significance. So how do you test enough samples that you can say with confidence that this will last through the, the lifetime of the product? Well, you have first of all tests, and that is what we call accelerated tests. So based on uh, post-mortem analysis, you can determine the, the failure modes in systems. And then you identify tests that you can do in a very short time frame that comes to the same failure mode. And that is done on special burners and cycling systems and things like that. Uh, but to be sure that you have all the failure modes, you also have to accumulate hours. Uh, and that is done then in the field. So we have friendly customers and there you have units that run and accumulate hours and uh, in this way you, you have a certain let's say portfolio of hours that you have uh, demonstrated and that costs time that is the problem with all these high temperatures components you can't design them and sell them tomorrow in series you always have a long time frame between the initial concept and, and definition of the product and the series and that to my opinion due to the years that I am in the business now, uh, you see that, that that hampers, in fact, the serial production. A lot of companies still accumulating experience before they're going to invest and say, now we go to the market with a high volume. But I think we come now in a stage that a lot of them have enough inf uh, information and rely on their own products. So, to my opinion, you're going to see some change in the coming years, yes. Okay, are there any questions from the audience? It doesn't appear so right now. So I guess my last question is, uh, you know, if I'm uh, designing a system, uh, you know, why, why would I buy a, a custom uh, heat exchanger from Bosal instead of buying an off-the-shelf component? Uh, yeah, you know, sell me on the value that that would bring my, my product. Because well, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that, that you have uh, the confidence in, in products that they function and they are well tested and uh, well designed for the purpose they need. Uh, the, you have a lot of heat exchangers, but heat exchangers for this type of application is always a difficult one. And uh, it, uh, so we come back to the start. An exhaust system is also more than just a tube. Uh, you have a lot of things that, that are uh, involved in such a system. It's not only material, it's fluid dynamics, thermal, uh, NVH, everything that uh, must be considered to get a correct product in combination with the fuel cell stack. And uh, that needs some more knowledge than just welding something together or brazing something together. Yeah. Do you something to add? No, it's a, we are not only an R&D company, we are really a production company. So we can, we can take, uh, we can follow the, the ramp up of, uh, of your products and um, the kind of customized design with standardized concepts, but uh, customized features is really going to help you to achieve uh, the very high efficiency that you need to uh, reach with uh, these kind of new power generators. Well, very good. So there you have it. This is uh, Bosel making custom high-performance heat exchangers for fuel cells. Uh, you know, thank you very much for joining me. If everyone else could uh, thank uh, our guests here. You're welcome. Uh, for more information, you can see Bosel at booth D50.
Uh, up next is a, a talk entitled The Latest Trends in Battery and Fuel Cell Testing with Matthias Bodhi from FuelCon. Thank you very much, everyone.